Hi everybody, welcome back. It's the 17th day of August already and in a flash, but there certainly comes some good news this evening by way of, well, we've already seen a beautiful day in the neighborhood. My goodness, it was gorgeous out there. How would you like to have some more of that weather-wise? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not all bad. It's not all exactly like today either, but a beautiful day to start off the work week. I'm also starting off this work week Kind of where I left you last week, I've still got some good news to share with you. A few reports uh, that just are not ready, haven't been able to get with everyone to put a few of those together. Working on a lot of other things as well for here and in the Sagersville Independent. We do have a lot of ground to cover this evening, which includes a couple of very important updates for you that I'll share in just a few seconds. Some of the most important that I could have, and then we'll also have important updates. Local COVID numbers, more cases reported in McGoffa County over the course of the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and today. Uh, well, we've also got state numbers that are starting to show McGoffa County, starting to show up and not in a good way either, and a host of other things out there to talk about. You know, it's been a, it's been a busy past week and certainly weekend for a lot of parents. So a lot of our babies heading back to college. High school not starting as of yet, but college class is getting underway and in person. And we're seeing a lot of schools like Morehead State University, UK, and others working very hard to keep our kids safe. Still makes it tough. Other uh, parts of the country which have already started are already seeing some problems. For example, the University of North Carolina one weekend has canceled in-person classes for undergrads. Uh, and they are trying to deal with a number of clusters of the coronavirus, mostly linked uh, to some student housing, a lot linked to off-campus parties, as well as bars and things of that nature, which are seeing large numbers of students inside. Morehead State University, I know, coming down or saying that they will really hard on any gatherings over 10 on campus, off campus, it doesn't matter. All schools taking as many precautions as they can to try to keep our kids safe. College classes, for the most part, pretty much underway now for all of our most known colleges here as far as our kids in the Eastern Kentucky area attend. Not all, but most. So we wish them well and keep them in our prayers and hope it all goes well as possible. With that said, we'll be talking about school here in McGoffin County in the next coming days. I spoke with Superintendent of School Scott Hilton earlier today, and he's going to get us caught up to date on their plans for, of course, virtual learning which will start september the 8th just a couple of weeks away look for that here on your news today and of course in the sigersville independent as well first let me go into the two updates that i want to pass along that are not covid related tonight two very important updates one that you literally have a window of only a couple of weeks mm, right at to donate to help support our local nonprofits for the 2020 online community day first i want to say thank you to so many who have already gone online and donated community day like everything else could not be held in its normal form or fashion this year but that need is still there that need is worse this year than ever for our local 18 participating nonprofit organizations so the community foundation here in mcgoffin county devised a way for everyone to help and that is to simply log on to bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day don't forget the community day after the slash and simply donate just takes a couple of clicks and for every dollar that you donate the community foundation will match it with two more so like we've been saying a ten dollar donation equals 30 and a $100 donation, for example, equals $300. And in just the past week or a little less, I think we were a little couple hundred dollars in the bank, so to speak, when this started, when I brought it to you last week at this time, around Tuesday, and over $1,263 have been donated thus far. But we're way, way short. Remember, the foundation is matching everything two to one up to $35,000. That's huge. And it's very needed. We're going to be talking to some of these nonprofits starting very, very soon about how important this is to them, even more so than ever. But if you can, anything you can, please remember, go to bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day and donate today. This campaign is only slated to run until the end of the month, the 31st. And that puts us two weeks away. So please, anything, anything you can. Now, 
in my other update for you. And while you're online, I mean, you could take four or five minutes out of your day and do so much good for McGoffin County by simply, after you go to the Bluegrass Community Foundation website and donate to Community Day, go to census, or their 2020census.gov. This is also vitally important to those same nonprofits, but to everyone, the county as a whole. For every person that we don't get to count in the census, that's $2,000 per person. That's how they average it. And you don't only do the census every 10 years. That's $20,000 ahead that we're not getting in on federal funds. And right now, as a nation, we have a 63.8% response rate. 63.8% as the United States together. Break that down into states. We're only going to look at Kentucky. It's the only one I'm worried about. We're actually a little higher than the nation, ladies and gentlemen. How cool is that? 66.3%. Now, going a little further, let's take it down to county level. Johnson County, as is represented to the far right of your screen, well, they're up there at 58.2%. Johnson County with a 58.2% response rate. About 34% of those folks going online and filling it out. It takes just a few moments. Breathitt County has a 53.8% response rate. And about half, right at 25% of those folks going on the internet to fill out their form. Takes two or three minutes, no hard questions. You don't have to get any paperwork out. You just click on there and take care of it. Morgan County leads the pack for our little part of the world at 61.4%. And that's something to be proud of. They're just trail Kentucky and they're almost right at the national rate. But we here in McGoffin County are still trailing. I know the last update I have for you weeks ago, we were hovering right around the 35, 36%. Well, we've climbed, but we're still only at 44.7% for response rate for McGoffin County, trailing all of our numbers and some of trailing all of our neighbors, rather, and trailing some of them significantly. So if you can, next time you're online, and we're all online all the time, most of us, please go and support Community Day 2020, our local nonprofits, and then if you haven't filled out the census, fill out the census. And next week, we'll be sitting and meeting with some of the actual census workers who are in McGoffin County. They've been going out door to door to try to make sure that this is getting done. Uh, They're not getting to all the doors. Uh, And we'll leave it at that and let the judge explain later. But we'll be having that interview in the coming day or two. And I'll have more news after this. Come to Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville and get your prescriptions filled. Your over-the-counter medications and immune system boosters all from the safety and comfort of your own vehicle, either in their drive through or with their new curbside service. You can also call ahead or just download the My GNP app, that's Good Neighbor Pharmacy, and refill and manage your prescriptions right from your device, helping you and yours stay healthy and safe. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. Summer heat and no AC make for a miserable drive. But don't sweat it. Call Black Smoke Performance in Sagersville for inspection, diagnostics, and repair by qualified technicians with the latest technology and equipment. Don't suffer in the summer heat. Get your air conditioning fixed today at Black Smoke Performance. Car accidents don't stop. Accidents at work don't stop. Disability and SSI cases don't stop. Your legal needs and concerns don't stop for the coronavirus, and neither does McFarland and Tinker. They are open, able to schedule appointments per CDC guidelines, and always available for telephone and video conferences. Please, be safe, be smart, stay home, and don't let your legal needs fall victim to the pandemic. Call McFarland and Tinker and let them take care of them for you. Your local COVID update coming in just a few moments. The public health director here in McGoffin County and mayor weighs in on new cases reported Saturday, Sunday, and today, and new businesses to be cited for not following the mask mandate. We'll have that in just a few seconds. Statewide, we'll get to our governor in just a few seconds, which numbers today, like national numbers, 
are seeing still a steady increase of positive cases among our kids. In fact, the CDC over the course of the weekend issued new guidance to health care workers citing just that, saying that children now make up over 7% of all confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States, and at the same time, they account for 22% of the U.S. population. The number of cases in kids steadily increasing, they say, beginning from March and now continuing into this first half of August. That is a trend that we could also see or hear about today as Governor Bashir presented his numbers with them continuing to be at a plateau or in a plateau, but also in taking a look at last week's numbers, as was feared, they were higher than the week before. The governor began his daily update with announcing new drive through testing locations in Fayette County, free, and I think on the campus of the University of Kentucky, saying that Kentucky is one of the few states who are not seeing a decrease in testing numbers. He also said that July was the first of the several continued week, weeks of the exponential spike in numbers, positive cases that we saw. Going back to the first week of July there towards the right of your screen, 1,675 cases. That number went to 2,482 the next week, almost doubling the next week to 3,772. And that started the initial plateau, the second plateau Kentucky's actually been in with last week's total coming in at 4,333 cases, which was about 500 more than the week prior, but still, he says, to be considered in a plateau. So today's report, we have 376 new cases of COVID-19. That's about in line with the last several weeks and what we have seen on Mondays. 54 of those, that's, you know, 14, 15% are 18 or under. 54 of our 376 cases today are amongst people 18 years or younger. When we remove du duplicates, we have 39,691 positives since uh, the beginning uh, of, of this crisis. Uh, our COVID positivity rate is back up a little bit to 5.8%. Now, even if we are going to plateau on our overall numbers, we definitely need to see the positivity rate starting to, to go down. Um, there are other states that I was talking to today, they've been through far worse than we have um, and are now on the decline. We wanna see uh, that with our positivity rate. Total number of tests to date, again, I, every now and then I try to, in my mind, move back to late March when we didn't know if we were ever gonna be able to test remotely that 4% or, or hit that 60,000 um, uh, number uh, a week. So 760,022 total tests administered. Uh, as of today, we have 563 Kentuckians hospitalized because of COVID-19, 136 currently in the ICU, 80 on a ventilator. The governor also announced an additional five Kentuckians who lost their lives since yesterday's update. I'll have our local update forthcoming in just a moment. A brief community calendar tonight, but nonetheless, as always, brought to you by your local Farm Bureau agent, Doug Green. Yeah, just a quick reminder that the application period started today for the County Agricultural Investment Program, the CAIP for short. This is through the Kentucky Agricultural Development Fund and here locally by the McGoffin County Agriculture Investment Program. And this is for... Farmers here making important farm investments, about anything you can think of, agriculture, diversification, large animal, small animal, infrastructure, forage and grain improvement. Any questions you have, you can contact Edison McCarty at 349-6067. This is only open until September the 4th. No applications will be accepted after that. So if you want to get yours in, McGoffin County Farmers, that's how you certainly can find out more and do so. And if you have a calendar announcement, birthday, or anniversary, you can find it here by simply telling me so I can tell everyone else about it. Tonight's obituaries include services to be held this week in honor of 82-year-old Arnold Wireman of Gunlock. Arnold passed away on Sunday, the husband of Farley Wireman. He was born the son of the late Jim and Lorena Allen Wireman, and he survived as well by his wise wife, excuse me, but as well by sons Jimmy Roger, Randall, David Ray, Paul Douglas, and A.J. Wireman, daughters Deborah Gamble and Jacqueline Helton, three brothers Aaron Wireman, Albert Wireman, and Jimmy Wireman, and two sisters Thelma Wireman and 
Josephine Anderson, as well as a host of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Funeral services in honor of Mr. Arnold Weirman will be held this Wednesday morning at 11 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Friends can call on the funeral home for visitation tomorrow evening from 6 to 9 and prior to Wednesday morning services. The fields and the stands may be empty, and big events as we know them are just gone for 2020, but there is still a real need that's out there. McGoffin County Community Day needs your support. For the past 16 years, Community Day has been instrumental in helping our local nonprofits and civic groups raise the funds for all the good things they do for our community. And this year, instead of the traditional event, the 2020 McGoffin County Community Day fundraising activities are going to continue with an online fundraiser that's open until August the 31st where gifts can be made online at bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day to support our 18 local nonprofits who need your help now more than ever. All the money raised will be split equally between those groups and most importantly, for every dollar you donate, the foundation will match it with $2 up to 35 grand. That means your gift of 20 bucks becomes 60 or your gift of $100 becomes $300 to support those important programs and crucial services provided by our local nonprofits. So please go to bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day and donate today. Connolly Tire in Staffordsville is now a proud partner of Rough Country for all of your suspension and lift kit applications. And you can always go to ConnollyTire.net to get the latest offers. Like right now, $100 when you buy a set of Mickey Thompsons, $100 on a set of Continentals, and many, many more summer deals, including $35 computer diagnostics. That's Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. It's hard to describe the t-shirt lines and looks in right now at the seasonal shop, but I'm gonna try. Two of them are made right here in KY, Ridge and Holler, because you know, in Kentucky, you're always in one or the other and both are always beautiful. Just check these designs out. The other is Yonder and it's made in Pikeville and it's just as cool and creative and all Kentucky. Definitely something there to appeal to everyone and the ever popular Turnrow brand, also at the seasonal shop for all fans of anything farming. And you can come into the shop and experience the magic of perfectly chilled drinks for regular and slim cans, regular or even wine bottles, cups and more. It's the Cadillac of koozies by Brewmate, all colors and styles in stock right now at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. Oh, it's what a lot of you've been waiting for. They're back, but only for a limited time. Loaded potato wedges at your Sagers Valise famous recipe. That's right, our famous hand-cut homemade potato wedges smothered in cheddar cheese, real crispy bacon, topped with either sour cream or ranch, your choice. And they're still only $2.49 with tax. Get them while you can at your Sagers Lee's. So Kentucky has released an incidence rate map that shows COVID cases per 100,000 residents for every county. Of course, McGoffin County and most Kentucky counties do not have a population of 100,000, but when you break it down to that ratio, it puts an even number for all counties. And this number shows that the coronavirus is indeed spreading actively and that McGoffin County, which was one of the very last counties in the state, to see their first positive case is now one of 45 Kentucky counties considered to be in an accelerated or critical disease transmission group. 
Yes, all the counties in yellow show community spread. Uh, the green, there's only four of those, I guess, show to be on track with very minimal numbers of positive cases. So the green is good. The next is yellow with what we'll call average community spread. But then you get into the browns, which includes McGoffin County, which also uh, includes as well Johnson County and Knott County. And those are among 45 other counties. All the browns considered to be in an accelerated spread. And then the red, also among those 45 considered to be critical but McGoffin County with more than 50 cases now we'll have that updated number in just a few seconds has a 12.9 number now that is a 12.9 people per 100,000 population so that's how it compares Johnson County neighboring Johnson County is at 15.5 Knott County at 18.3 uh, we're the only three counties in the immediate surrounding county area with numbers like that everyone else two three four five six seven for floyd county because we've seen such a high or consistently increasing number of cases here in mcgoffin and johnson and not for the past few days and those numbers in mcgoffin county continued to climb over the course of the weekend just want to start you know we ended the week last week with uh Discussions on a citation that the health department had issued to one local business. I actually had a viewer call this morning and left a message and mentioned at least one other specifically. I'm not going to mention it by name because I don't have a way of knowing if, what the case is with that business. But uh, in regards to any additional citations, is that still something that you guys are going to have to do? Yeah, there, there's definitely one coming out tomorrow, probably four. Uh, when I we take these calls serious when they call the health department or one of your complaints, we check it out. We try to check it out and make sure it's. You know, sometimes I can see maybe one or two being in there and stuff, but, but you know, we need to have 100% compliance, and, and it's, it's very difficult to do that. But habitual uh, offenders, uh, but uh, just everybody stay cool. We're going to get them. Uh, we're going to cite them. Uh, and uh, like I say, there's going to be a, a couple of, probably three more in town uh, is going to get citations tomorrow for not necessarily the employees not wearing masks, but not enforcing people inside the store not wearing masks. How many cases do we have over the weekend and, and today? Uh, we had four this weekend, one today, making five, so we're up to 57 total positive cases. Uh, the good news is uh, we, we had a bunch come out of isolation this weekend, and so we've got 43 recovered and only 40, 14 now quarantined. But like I say, we had four more this weekend and one today. Do you know if any of those are still hospitalized? Last week we had several hospitalized. We still have three hospitalized. Uh, one of them, uh, when we had four hospitalized, one of them checked himself out. He didn't stay for the full treatment, so he's, he checked himself out. So we have three hospitalized as of today. Uh, I think that you, you, uh, you were talking about having to cancel or postpone tonight's city council meeting. What's the decision made there? Uh, we had uh, uh, a positive case related to one of the council members, and uh, I'm just, uh, I tell you what, it, it's getting to where, uh, just wearing a mask and being in the same room with, with a bunch of other people with meetings, uh, I just decided to, to be a health director and the mayor. Just, it better off. We're going to go to the chat to go to the Zoom. We're going to go to where uh, people can uh, do the meeting remotely. We're not going to meet in the in the in the city hall. I think the numbers are up in Kentucky. Numbers are up in in McGoffin County, and we're getting into that uh, the tier where we're considered uh, a really effective uh, state. So. Uh, just precautionary and just for the looks of it, uh, we're just going to go, I'm going to fix it up and we can go on the Zoom and uh, do those meetings that way and just to be on the safe side. Well, lastly, on to a forecast for you that I think you're going to have some, well, you're going to like and have some dislikes, I think. That's pretty much some of every forecast I've, I've ever given to you. But before that, I find myself cautiously getting excited because just about every time we think something is actually going to go on as scheduled or rescheduled per the pandemic, it doesn't. Right now, you know, when we saw the Big Ten and the Pac-12 cancel football last week, it, I, well, not everyone. I think Andrew was calling for the SEC to probably continue to march on, and they have, announcing today that the University of Kentucky's first game of the season will be a road game at Auburn, and it is set for September the 26th. Yes, crossing my toes as well. Uh, other big matchups, of course, for the first week in the SEC, Alabama at Missouri, Missouri, Florida at Ole Miss, Georgia and Arkansas, Tennessee at South Carolina. Um, full schedule for the first week. As for the complete 
schedule for our beloved Wildcats that it was to be released sometime later on this evening on the SEC Network, I believe, here coming up shortly. So, again, fingers crossed. I'd like to cross my fingers and make a forecast of nothing like today's weather up here. I can't do that, but it's not all bad either. We do have a little better chance of some showers tomorrow than we certainly did today, but temperatures still lofting around the low 80s for most of the forecast period. Yeah, what an evening to get to sit outside. I've been in this building all day today. I walked out for about 20 minutes, and I felt a little bit of that beautiful air, and I'm going to try to see a little bit of it before dark. But 63, mostly clear and light wind. When was the last time you heard me say mostly clear and light wind, and that was it for night or an evening forecast? Been a while. Tomorrow, low 80s, partly sunny skies again. Now, tomorrow is going to be really our best, or at worst, however you want to look at it, the day with the most shower chances pretty much in the entire forecast period. Your Tuesday is full of partly sunny skies and a 40% chance of some showers and thunderstorms. A slight chance, I think, early on around noon or 1. It might bump up to about 40% later on in the afternoon. Partly sunny in 82. And we'll see more clouds, I think, than uh, not tomorrow night with a low of 62. And then mostly sunny skies on your Wednesday as the sun returns. Daytime highs, very low 80s at 81. Mostly sunny, only a 20% chance of showers. I mean, temperatures and conditions much like today, just factoring in a few shower chances. Midweek, like I said, 81 mostly sunny. Thursday, 81 mostly sunny. Still a 20% chance of some showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon after 3 or so. And that's it. For your Friday, 82 partly sunny. Still a 30% shot in the afternoon after 3 or 4. Saturday, 84 partly sunny, a little bit warmer, and uh, still 30% chance of some afternoon showers and thunderstorms for the first half of your weekend. And that's uh, stays that way for the next several days, right at 84 pretty much Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, partly to mostly sunny skies and a slight chance of showers across the board. Pretty nice. Like I said, I'm still working on some things and trying to find some things either not COVID-related and good news or something good news COVID related either way I can get it we're going to get you some good news here in the next few days got a few things in the works and uh, we hope to see you back here for the next show and that will be tomorrow night of course for this one good night and thank you for watching